NVIDIA Sync is a system that NVIDIA makes available that allows you to use the DGX Spark remotely and very easily from another computer system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a Macintosh into it. I'll probably do a separate video on Windows. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Uh, it's really pretty similar though on Windows. You just have to install their NVIDIA Sync application and we're going to do that right now. Right now I am on the DGX Spark and most of this is going to be done more on the Windows or the Mac side. But you can see the instructions here and we'll go into configure now and look at the instructions actually on connecting it. You can see the little application that you need to download here for Windows or for Mac. The main thing that we're going to need to do on this side of the fence is find out the IP address because the NVIDIA client is basically just going to connect through SSH and it's going to manage all the certificates and everything for you. That it's, it's quite great at doing that. So knowing this IP address, the 10.0.4.205, that's the IP address that we're going to use from the other side. You may want to look at how to set that as a static IP address. This is a local address to your local network. So you can probably configure that to a given Mac address to be static on your router. That's how I do it. So let's jump over to the Mac side. All right, over here on the Mac, what we're going to do is go to the build.nvidia.com slash spark. And there is the link here that we saw before, and we'll just go configure now. It always gives the description here, and then you want to click on the second link to get the actual information, and you'll download the Mac version of it. And you'll see it in your downloads folder. Just open that up, drag it over. Going into your applications folder, you can see it there. I'm going to go ahead and launch it, the usual security concerns. And you'll see it launched there. And it has a nice little tray icon up there that you can easily access it from. We're going to add a device. And here you can name it kind of anything you want to, but I'm going to call it NVIDIA Spark. IP address is that IP address that we saw before. Then it wants my username and password. And then we can add it. Set up successful. Now you might run into issues here. Basically, it's just trying to do an SSH connection. So if you run into issues here, I would try to SSH literally from the command line terminal and see what happens. We'll go ahead and get started. It's connecting. And here you can see it has a whole variety of things that you're able to do. I like being able to access the DGX dashboard literally on my computer here. So I can see that I'm running things. Uh, there's nothing really running on the machine right now. I can go ahead and start up Jupyter Lab on my DGX Spark, and that is starting. You see the information here. And then once it is complete, you can open in a browser. And you literally have DGX Lab or Jupyter Lab on your DGX running right here. And you can run stuff and watch the results from it. Other things you can do, obviously you can start a terminal. It's not too hard to SSH into it yourself, but you see the terminal start up here. You might get a little prompt to give it additional security because if you noticed, it did fire a terminal command there. So it literally launched a, it literally opened up a console window and fired the terminal command to get into there. So you'll need, you'll need to give it um, permission to do that the first time that it does it. VS Code and Cursor work really pretty similarly. These are both really nice and I use them pretty extensively. Let's go ahead and look at VS Code. I'm clicking that and it launches VS Code. It does install a little package into VS Code when it first starts up. So if it's unable to do that, you'll get some sort of an error that tells you about that. So looking at this, you can see that it's basically browsing the contents of my DGX Spark. The terminal is my DGX Spark. And I can then just easily click on files, edit them, and work on projects that I have hosted remotely on the DGX Spark. 
So this is very handy because I don't always want to necessarily be sitting in the same room with the DGX Spark. I can do a whole lot remotely just by connecting to it. You can also set up additional applications in it. It provides that option as well. And it does all of the tunneling to make sure that you can connect through web browsers to things. So that's the overview. I'll definitely have more stuff on DGX Spark. Let me know if you'd like to see the Windows variant of this. It's almost the same. It's just you're installing the Windows client. So thank you for watching and like and subscribe if this was useful. Thank you.